Hello, welcome to my channel, and my name is Cindy, and I have a guest here today. Hello, Mindy. Hello. And, oh, yeah, that's right. We're here for Out School. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Okay, <laughs> great. So, yeah, so this is one of my Out School teacher interviews, and I'm really excited about these interviews. So anyone who's watching, if you're a teacher and you would like to be interviewed, let me know. You can message me below or you can send me a private message. Um, yeah, so this is Mindy today and we're gonna try to keep this to 15 minutes as much as we can. And okay. we just wanna showcase your classes, Mindy. So okay. can you introduce yourself and tell us about your classes? So my name is Mindy Danforth. <coughs> Sorry about that. I've been teaching on OutSchool for almost a year, not quite a year yet. Um, okay. And what I teach during the school year is primarily reading classes So and beginning reading classes. So the students already know their alphabet and some small okay. words to read. And then they're just expanding and moving up to a higher level of reading. And it's called Ready Reader. And I have one through five. So it's a full year of reading curriculum. And I go over um, phonics, phonemic aware awareness, sight words, um, reading fluency, reading comprehension. So it's a very complete reading program. Therefore, awesome. each class is 45 minutes. So okay. it's a long class, but and we even do a little bit of writing in the class. The students do really well and they are engaged the whole time. And my students, I'm so excited how much they have progressed this year. A lot of them are students that um, should have been in preschool or kindergarten this year, but with okay. COVID, they weren't there. Um, and some just want to get a jump on reading before they start kindergarten. And some are um, a little bit behind in reading. So it's a mix, but they're anywhere yeah. from the age of four to seven is what I usually okay. teach. Great. And I only allow five in a class. I really like to keep my class small so that I can see all of them on the screen at the same time. And they all have plenty of time to do some interaction. So that's what I teach okay. during the school year. But okay, in the so summer. The couple, I have a couple of questions. Yes. So if say you had a, a kid that was not level one, could they, <clears throat> do you ever have kids jump in at like level four or five? Yep. All the time. Okay. Yep. They okay. just jump in wherever the parents think that they might fit. Okay. And there's not a huge difference between the levels. There's a little bit okay. of a difference, but not a huge. And so if they want to jump in at a higher level, they can do that. Okay. So how do you do that? Um, like, do you do it as an ongoing class or are these um, yeah. They're regular, little what do you call multi them? Yeah, they're multi-day semester classes. Next okay. year, I'm going to be changing a little bit because it was like Ready Reader 1 and 2 took up the first semester, and then Ready Reader 3, 4, and 5 took up second semester. But next year, I think I'm just going to have Ready Reader 1 go the full semester, Ready Reader 2 go the full semester. Because even okay. though I'd have students jump in, um, like mid semester, not a lot did that. And I would also lose some students. So I'm going to do it where it's one full semester strong. And then if they want to jump out um, for second semester or more want to jump in second semester, it's totally up to them. I found okay, so mid semester enrollment wasn't as good as it was in okay. September and January. Yeah. Yeah. So do the parents pay like one lump fee and then, then you got it? Okay. Yeah, they so do. Think you're, yeah. You're going to have some, you know, credibility though now, because I was looking, I'm going to share my screen and show your classes and you can continue with what okay. you're offering right now while I'm sharing. Okay. My screen. Go ahead. So I am taking a break from my ready reader classes this summer. I think we all need a break and we need mm -hmm. something kind of switched up a little bit. Mm -hmm. So this summer I'm offering a pink camp, the pinkalicious camp where I do a read aloud for pinkalicious. And if they are good, strong readers, then they can read with me if they would like, or they can just listen to me read either one. 
but in the pink right, so cam, pink delicious. Yeah. Can you see it? Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. So in the pink camp, we'll have a tea party. We're going to be cooking a snack. We'll have a coloring sheet to go along with each day. I like in this summer, I love to give the kids a coloring sheet. So if they're, you know, a lot of kids get a little fidgety with a read aloud. So I love to give them a coloring sheet so they can color while I'm reading if they would like to. <clears throat> and then... um. The other class that, so those are my ready readers that you're seeing up there. And mm -hmm. then right there is my farm animal and pet summer reading and writing camp. So I try to incorporate just a little bit of writing in each of the classes, whether it's writing sight words or a question, answering a question to a um, journal entry kind of thing. But with the farm animal, so I have many animals at my house that Cindy knows. <laughs> yes. So when we are talking about an animal that I actually have, we'll go outside and get wow. to actually see the animal, which is really fun. But there's some animals in that summer camp that I don't have. You know, I don't have a cow or a pig anymore. So okay. I'm, I'm taking some um, videos of those. Mm -hmm. And so then they'll be seeing the animal via video. So around my area, it's very rural. So there's so many animals around. One of my friends has a really cool donkey. So I have my donkey, plus I have a video of my friend's donkey, etc. And then um, the other thing I'm going to do this summer is a reading fluency camp. And with the reading fluency camp, that's kind of an extension of my ready reader class. But those are for students who just want to keep up reading. And I have, I don't know about you when you're, you or the parents at home with their students are in a reading class, they're all wanting to read aloud. They're like, pick me, pick me. Can I read out loud? So I decided to make that class as they bring a book, they read out loud, and then I teach each session some skills that help them improve their reading fluency. So reading right. fluency is just reading like you're talking. So it'll be teaching them how to use expression, how to pause at punctuation, et cetera. So there's different skills that are going to be taught, and that's an okay. ongoing. So the Pinkalicious is a one-week camp. Part one and part two is another week farm animals. I have week one and week two, four day camp. And then um, reading fluency is an ongoing class. So you can jump in and practice your reading fluency all summer. Okay. Um, so they then, bring their own books to reading fluency. Yes. They bring whatever book mm -hmm. they want. Okay. Yes. So how many kids do you have in that class? Well, I have only, I think five. I limit everything okay. to five. Yeah. I really don't like more than five. I know for teachers, we make more money with the more students we have. Yeah. But personally, I just don't feel good about having six, seven, eight kids in there yeah. because I can't see them all at once. Yeah. I want to be able Especially to see reading. them. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And I want them to have plenty of time to read. And then cool. the last class that I do a lot of are brain break recess classes. Yes. That is just a fun class. The kids yeah. hop on, they know my list of different games that we like to play, and they each pick what they want to play that day. And we might spend five minutes doing a scavenger hunt, five minutes doing charades, five minutes doing Pictionary, five minutes do would you rather questions, etc. They even love the Find a Star games on my Google Slides that I use in VIP oh, Kids. Yeah. Uh -huh. They love to do that. I don't know. And there's one that's um, build a unicorn and they love to build the unicorn Very on my cool. phone. So, and that's an ongoing. And this summer I'm also offering it as a little camp where they come twice a week for a month. And then again, twice a week for a month. So that is all of the things that I'm personally offering. However, Cindy and I, we haven't really talked about this big much. announcement. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So we are teaming up out school selected us to be part of teacher pods. And so we will have three or four teachers in our pod. And Cindy and I were like a perfect match because I teach reading and tea parties and crafts. And Cindy teaches math and cooking and knitting. 
So our um, topics do not overlap at all. Right, so right. we are like awesome teammates yeah. to work together on it. But the kicker is it's a three hour summer camp and they will get to take it for a whole week, Monday through Thursday. So four days and it's three hours. So it's three to six, my time, four to seven, your time, right? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. But it's I'm designed have to do for crock pot meals for my family. Yes, <laughs> yes. Supper time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But those are my favorite. I love to prep my meals early in the day. Yeah. And then, um, then at dinner time, I'm tired. I don't really want to have yeah. time. So yeah, those are awesome. Yeah. So we don't know a ton about it yet, except that we were selected. We're so excited. Yeah, it's always fun to be selected, mm -hmm. I think. I know. <laughs> yes, because this is a pilot program. So yeah. that is why not every teacher gets to do it, only right. um, ones that they picked. Yeah. And then we're going to get our training fairly soon on how exactly it all works. But from my understanding, the parents will sign up. There will be three or four teachers in there teaching. And then we'll be taking care and teaching your children for the whole afternoon wow. at three hours yeah. a lot. So that frees up parents. Think about how much parents yeah. can do for their own job. Yeah. If they're still yeah. working at home, they can get so yeah. much done while we're teaching their kids. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I'm picturing it like I'll probably teach the same thing three times in a mm -hmm. row. And we kind of. Oh, just, for sure. Yeah. yeah. That's. I'm thinking it might be breakout rooms, but I'm not yeah. really sure how it works it's either. It's kind of fun. It's, it's a new experience, a new mm -hmm. adventure. That's all yes. this virtual teaching has been for me anyway. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. And it's kind of fun for us because, you know, just like the kids get tired of our same curriculum. And yeah. at least my Ready Reader class is very regimented as far as, we start with a read aloud and then we go right mm -hmm. into our phonemic awareness. Then we have a little show and tell. And then, you know, so we keep just going through mm -hmm. um, a same set structure. So mm -hmm. this gives me a chance to mix it up and find a new structure for the summer. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. So and a new exciting. schedule. I, I don't usually teach that late in the day either. I Most don't either. Yeah. I have classes. Um, I have one class that goes till five. But when you're marketing a lot towards the West Coast students, right. the California students, they need that later in the day class. So right. we'll see yeah. how it so goes. We'll see how that goes and see what transpires yeah. from it. Hopefully, I am, you know, we get a lot of students. I have I don't even know what they want me to teach really. You know, do they want me to teach math? Do they want me to teach Yeah. You know, I finger think, knitting. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know, but I think as um, pod, the three pod teachers, we get to have some say in that, just like yeah. we do with our own. And then they also do provide some things for us, it said in yeah. the email. So we're still yeah. figuring it out as we figure out yeah. more. We still a little mystery. Yeah, yeah, we can come back on and tell you more about it. Yeah. But yeah, I'm excited. So exciting. I'm exciting. And it's exciting because I actually, Mindy, where do you live? I live in Texas. You live in Texas. I live in New Hampshire. So Mindy yes. and I have been friends online, mm -hmm. like buddies, like we should yes. have a tea party. Yes, because we should. <laughs> <laughs> we have been friends online for quite a while mm -hmm. now. And Mindy also has a YouTube channel. Yes. So you can check that out. I'll post her link for out school below this video as well as um, your YouTube channel. And so you can check that out. So we've been friends and I've kind of, you know, watched her videos and we've communicated behind the scenes. So this is really fun that we get to actually work together. So. We are in a collaboration teacher um, messenger chat. Right. So Cindy and I talk multiple times every day. Yeah. 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 So every day we get to chat. And it's so yeah. funny because we've never met in person, but yeah. we're still good friends. It's yeah, very it's cool, so cool how we have virtual friends. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> One of my favorite videos that you have, and I did like a um, a pet show and tell when I first mm -hmm. started um, out school. I haven't really done it for a while, but um, I used your little dog, the little mm -hmm. dog that got Frankie. the little yes. leg 
bit off. That was such yes. a sad story, but I know. It worked and out. I just and I thought about you when I just did my update because I was like, yeah. you know what? They all saw Frankie like two weeks post surgery, yeah. but you need to see her now. She yeah. is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. She, She's constantly and I love videos. I've used those to show my students because I'm like, yes. you know, here's a little miracle dog, you know, yes. it's so yeah. awesome. I thought for sure they were going to put the dog down, but. Oh, I know. And it was. And close. my whole family knew about it too. Cause I would be like, oh my goodness. Oh, oh, that's terrible. And they're like, yeah. what, what? So I had to tell them the whole story. <laughs> yeah. It was close because luckily we got her to the vet right after it happened and she had not gone into shock yet and so oh. if she went into shock already oh, from yeah, that injury yeah. there was it would have been a harder um time pulling her out of that because she's so little she's a yeah. yorkie poop for those of you who don't know but um so my daughter has been spending a lot of time out at our ranch she mm -hmm. loves that we have the doggy doors, so the dogs just go in and out, and they have a nice little pen. So she yeah. is um, has a lot more freedom here. But when oh, we let her out of her little pen, oh my goodness, yeah. the first thing she runs around with her little playmate. My daughter got her a playmate. She because yeah. she loves other dogs, loves yeah. loves. Oh, that's, that's awesome. Why she, got her leg bit off. <laughs> oh, right. Oh, right. Your, my husband's bringing her. <laughs> we have a little dog that doesn't like other dogs. Oh, oh she no. loves. So you can see here, she doesn't have her other leg. <laughs> oh, and here she is. She wow. kind of looks like a little rag muffin at Amazing. the moment. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that she's is getting so some sweet. bacon. My husband's giving her a bacon. <laughs> bacon. Yeah. She loves, she loved, like when she was little and they were trying to get her to um, increase her weight because she was so little. They gave her cheese yeah. all the time. So you oh. open the cheese drawer and she is oh, right funny. there getting wow. the cheese. It's so oh, funny. Cute. Yeah. Yeah. She's a, she, I don't mind giving her people food because she needs to gain some weight. Yeah. yeah. So she's eating so her bacon. Oh she my gosh. It all off. <laughs> yes. So she runs when she gets outside. And runs and runs and runs and plays with her playmate and then goes and sits in the pond, the dirty, muddy, oh, disgusting right. pond. So <laughs> she has to get a shower like all the time. If she oh, goes out, she has goodness. to get a shower. That's yes. Funny. So I think she lost That's her bacon. Great. But all right, oh, say goodbye, Frankie. Okay. You're going great. away. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So She's yeah. Fun. So thank you so much for coming and You're welcome. sharing your life and your classes with us and have a great summer and thank you and we'll keep we'll keep you posted on how yeah. things progress with our teacher yeah. pod class but yeah. um so just an fyi on that if anyone's yeah. interested cindy and i will not be teaching until july we start the beginning of july i think it's like right after july 4th maybe does that sound right I can't remember what the dates were. <laughs> and then I think it goes to like the middle of August. So we have signed up to do it for like seven weeks. So yeah. we're not going to be. Did did you sign up for June or is it just me that's not doing? I June? can't remember. They said to save the dates and I thought it was morning. Then it was afternoon. Then it was. So I have to go back to my calendar to okay. make sure that yes. I'm all. So but I don't I, usually keep at those times anyway. My schedule was a little wonky in June because I am taking a week off to go for our anniversary trip. Um, but so I think that's why they just had me start in July. So, yeah, yeah I'm excited. Okay, so we'll stay All tuned. Right. Yeah, thank so you. thank you so much. And like I thank said, I'll post for... Mindy's links below for anyone who's interested. Look like and, some great classes. <laughs> and if anybody wants to learn baking, oh, my goodness. The bread Cindy has made is oh my word, crazy good looking. Me. Unfortunately, and I haven't gotten to taste it, but it looks beautiful. It looks yeah, beautiful. and I have students right now that are advanced. I changed the title to it, "Bread Making Advanced" mm -hmm. because they give me ideas. And oh wow, yeah, wow. <laughs> babka bread and Italian pull apart bread and. Next wow. week we're making pizza. So if anybody's interested in making pizza with us, oh then yum. You can totally sign up. Cause I have two amazing girls. I we just 
love our experience. We had up to five, but the mm -hmm. other ones have canceled out and they're like, we want to come back. So I hate to just stop the class because if anybody wants to jump in or jump right. out. So yeah. it's an ongoing class. Anybody can come at any time. But I did have one kid that came and he just wanted to make bread and we were making donuts that day. So oh. she signed up and then she took them out because she's like, I wanted him to make bread, not donuts. So oh. I was like, well, oh, sorry. <laughs> um, well, the pizza, I wish I could take that class because I'll make, I've made like pizza dough or bought pizza dough in the past, but to get it like, smushed out oh, thin yeah. and not Which get is, holes in it yeah. that is hard that is definitely it's a little bit of a talent an art yeah, yeah definitely yeah. definitely i i actually i've made pizza over the years many many times but um a few years ago we had a man come to our church who was older and his father had a pizza shop so oh. he knew how to and he was like type a to the max mm -hmm. like to the maximum yeah totally to almost you know embarrassing but he knew how to make pizza so he taught me how to make pizza um pretty well so wow that's yes. fun i don't that's always really like cool. to do it it is a little bit of work but mm -hmm. you can get the steps down to where it can be pretty easy yeah but I, have, cool. I also have one student that modifies her recipes because some of her family can't have gluten Oh, so good. she'll tell us how she modified the recipe. <laughs> oh, that's so. fun. Yeah, there's a lot of non-gluten eating yeah. people out there. So that's really yeah. fun. I yeah. told her she needs to write a book and, you know, share with people all the different, because some of them are vegetarian, uh, gluten, can't have gluten or can't have whatever else, you know, she's always a lot modified. of allergies. Yeah. And it's no problem for her. She's used to it, you know, wow. and, she and I just do it regular and she modifies it herself. She doesn't expect me to tell her how to do it. My husband she and I did the keto diet. And mm -hmm. so you don't eat any gluten on that. And so there's modifications for bread recipes and I have to say none of them that I've tried turned yeah. out very good. <laughs> Yeah, so, really the best. I, yeah, either don't eat bread or eat substitutes yeah. because right, when you right. modify a bread recipe, it's not always the best. But no, no, you but should I put did in my class because she does it. <laughs> I did watch on um oh, it's a VIP kid teacher who does YouTube channel on saving money, like okay. all these different ways of saving Brittany. money. Brittany yes. um, Flammer, I think. Yeah. Okay. So Brittany yeah. Flammer, she, I watched one of her videos and she said making your own bread costs like, like so much. Cents. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I was shocked. That, I'm like, oh, yeah. you can get a loaf of bread for like $1.50 or whatever at the grocery store. Right. And she's like, no, you save a good amount of money every month yeah. making oh, your own time. bread. Because it's time, 25 yeah. cents. I'm like, Plus it tastes better, you know. Oh, for it's sure. better for you. Yes, for yeah, sure. Without totally. all those so I get, like at the yeah. beginning of the pandemic, I got a big 50-pound bag of unbleached flour. That's really the best flour to make bread with. It's unbleached. Oh. And I just got a big, huge bag of it. It's like $20. And Brett, where's a fire? A fire? Yeah, my husband just lit our bacon on fire. <laughs> oh, I was like, uh, maybe she. I'm like smelling Is something. You okay? <laughs> yeah. See, that's the thing. You know, you have to have older kids to cook because I don't want to be online with some kid that lights the house on fire. So. <laughs> that's okay. My husband just did that. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's his house and his little world, so I'll let him handle well, that one. <laughs> I think because I had um, a candle burning there and okay. we get that quick bacon from Costco to have like a quick uh -huh. breakfast. And he must just set the bacon down near the candle. Oh my goodness. And oh, so it set the wow. whole package on fire, which is plastic. So that that's really weird. But it does have those little like paper dividers yeah. in between. So wow. I don't know, but I, I smelled something really weird. And then I looked over <laughs> and I'm like, 
Um, hun? <laughs> the kitchen's on fire. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Usually well, I'm, I'm the one to catch okay. the kitchen you didn't have on to call fire. <laughs> Just a little smelly in here now. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Anyhow. Wow. All right. Well, Anyhow, I know you want to yeah. keep it to 15 minutes. Yeah. And you and I, I could like... chat forever. So. We could. We could. We could. Yes. I could get my YouTube uh, minutes up, you know. Yeah. Really yes. <laughs> well, you'll have but... when you when you post this, you'll have to say, wait for the surprise at the end. Yeah. When Mindy's, catches, Mindy's kitchen catches on fire. <laughs> Yeah, I have to actually go out and plant some more plants. I'm getting addicted. Oh, I have so good. many. I grew tomato plants from seeds, and I have so many plants. I'm like, should I put them out on the road, like free plants? Because I have so many, I can't hardly plant them all. But yeah, I'm like, how many? How many did you grow from seed? A lot. Like I, I have. I don't know. I have. Um, I didn't really count. I probably have ten. I probably have maybe 20 more plants okay. that I could plant. So I grew mine from seed as well. I was so okay. proud that I yeah. like grew them from seed and they look fabulous. They look really good. And I'm like, I did not okay. buy a single plant this year. I grew everything okay. from seed. We bought this little, um, it was like $200, an Amazon greenhouse. Yeah. So it worked, but it was only a couple hundred dollars. And, um, so anyhow, I think I grew, my husband could tell me, I think it was like 75 tomato plants. Wow. And how many tomato plants did I grow? 75? Okay. And so many of them are like little, you know, the little okay. cherry tomatoes yeah. or little, okay. little tomatoes. I yeah. did grow one variety that's called the unicorn tomatoes. So I can't wait oh, nice. for those to grow. So I have wow. a lot of little tomatoes and they're already growing, but you know what? I planted all of them. You know, we live on 117 acres, so I have plenty of room. Wow. I planted all of them because what I want to do this year is can salsa. Yeah, that's my goal. I really want to can salsa. Yes, my family good. loves salsa, so I'm practicing some recipes to good. find out what recipe I like so far. Yeah, you should make some videos on that because a lot of people are going to be canning. I have a lot of cans yes. there. I honestly don't know if I'm going to have enough produce for myself to can mm -hmm. i'm kind of doing this because i'm a horrible gardener so i'm actually putting them in bins and i'm changing the location um oh. instead of putting that i always had a garden area off to the side and it could mm -hmm. never grow anything so i'm doing using containers and putting them in the front yard and then i told my husband if it turns out good this year and my plants grow well then we'll will construct some raised beds, mm -hmm. you know, and get ready yeah. for next year growing and do even and, more. And you can get bins of any type from even like Dollar Tree. Yeah, or, that's what I'm doing. Mm -hmm, Or ones yeah. that like you use something in your house, like a big can of like cottage yeah. cheese or whatever, you know. Yeah. Um, and I even bought this year because um, our garden location is a temporary place until – our house gets built. So next year it'll be moved closer to the house that's being built. But um, we bought some fabric sacks on Amazon yeah. that are like 10 gallon fabric sacks. They I've weren't very those. expensive yeah. and you can reuse those, yeah. but there's some benefit to it. And so we have our peppers in those. So we'll see if they Yeah, go. because the water can kind of go through mm -hmm. and it's airy and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah I saw those. I was going to... I was going to order some. I actually bought because I was I'm like really frugal. So I'm like, yeah. if I have to spend a million dollars to build a garden, what have I gained? You right. know, so I kind right. of want to make it somewhat not majorly expensive. Right. But um, I have been buying dirt and I have been I bought the containers at the dollar store. But I also bought some um, for a dollar. You can just get the fabric bags at the at Marshalls or TJ Maxx or something. Okay, those okay. are fabric bags, right? Yes, yes. And yes. so I just cut holes in the bottom, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna try a few different ways, and just as a variety of, you can use this, you can use that. Yes, you know, and those are 
you need to make videos on those experiments and see what grows the best. Seriously. Yeah. But, so, so I have I, my beans in one and it's, I'm hoping it's going to climb up my porch thing, you know? Mm -hmm. So I just put a bunch of bean plants in it, in a bag. Yes. And I just kind of folded it down a little mm -hmm. and I just, we'll see what happens. You know what else I've seen? Okay. So I know we're totally off topic. Sorry, people. <laughs> That's what if happens. you're watching, great. If you're not... It's what happens when Cindy and I get together. <laughs> <laughs> but I've seen people take the dirt bag, the bag of dirt, and fold it down. Yes. And they grow right in the bag. Now, I haven't yes. tried that. I'm so, trying that, too. I'm yes. like, why not? I just bought those bags, but I just emptied that bag. So let's just put some dirt back in it and see yes. what happens. Yeah. And just cut little holes for drainage in yeah. the bottom. Yeah. Yeah and yeah. see if it works so my only question know. was like how much dirt do i need like i was watching evelyn's video and she didn't have that much dirt she had like this much dirt but like i got bins that were like this high and i like filled it up like i put a lot of dirt in it well from what i've learned okay and now i'm a fairly new gardener because last year in our old house I just had a couple of four by four garden beds and I just put tomatoes and peppers in. And honestly, they didn't even do that well. No, so, no, they didn't. But, <clears throat> you know, I researched and studied a lot more this year and things mm -hmm. are looking great right now. Mm -hmm. So I'm super excited. We did a mixture of soil and compost and I even bought like worm castings on oh, um, yeah. Amazon and put you can get this giant bag of worm casting oh really big bag yeah for very cheap on amazon and, and then you I probably also, have a, have some in your yard somewhere you just need yeah but we have there. very sandy soil oh, okay on up here at the ranch versus yeah our old property was like regular okay. soil this is like very sand like it could okay. be a beach it's that sandy okay. wow yeah it's crazy how sandy it is so yeah. we do a lot of um additions to our soil and then okay. i also bought a little bag of um worms on amazon okay and they yeah. said red worms are the best okay. and so it was crazy it came like in a cloth bag so they could probably wow. breathe or whatever yeah. and it was like this big wow. and it just had like hundreds of red worms in there huh. i just took them and sprinkled them all over the plant oh, cool. hope we okay. get some good worms i don't know yeah no they're supposed to replenish themselves yeah i want to try yeah. ladybugs but they won't ship the ladybugs until like mid-june to our area so oh, wow. it must be a climate thing when they'll do the ladybugs but anyway, so I think with the dirt level, it depends on the plant. So like mm -hmm. if she was growing um, something that needs a shallower root, like maybe yeah, like tomatoes or peppers, you don't need as much. But if you're growing okay. like onions and potatoes, they All need right. like a big root system. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I would so like I to grew, do. I'm doing carrots in five gallon buckets. Okay. So I just got Wait. the five gallon and I filled it all the way up. Mm -hmm. And so I'm thinking, you know, the carrot can't grow any longer than the bucket. So to right. get the maximum. Right. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah. I didn't get my carrots or radishes planted yet. Um, I don't know if I'm going to get them planted or um, I might just skip those this year just because I kind of ran out of time and in Texas, we get our hot season fairly quick. Oh, and so right. we have to get all our stuff growing and done before um, it, gets it gets too hot. But then wow. we get a second planting. We oh, get a fall wow. crop as well. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's so. Cool. Yeah. Because yeah. I still want to do lettuce and I still have a whole bunch of stuff. Like I got yes. a bag i think it was 25 dollars for a bag of heirloom seeds mm -hmm. of all kinds of things that i probably won't use like all of them yeah I agree. so like my lettuce is done because it's getting oh, too wow. hot now yeah wow. so but i can grow it again come fall and mm. i have these two raised beds that we built um and what i did is i took these 
two old benches that were here at the mm -hmm. property when we bought it. And I, we just made some sides on it. We drilled holes in the benches so it could drain. Oh, and cool. we just used what we had here on the property and mm -hmm. made a raised bed. It turned out super cute and it was free because we had stuff here. Yeah. But the other raised bed um, trick that we're doing is we're putting a lot of things on pallets. And we did a okay. raised bed all on top of the pallet and put like landscaping fabric over where all the slits are, you know, in the pallet okay. and built it up because then with our tractor, we can pick it up and move it over to our new house when it's done. Wow. Yeah. I wanted it portable. So we weren't like building things just for the year. You know, we want to be able yeah. to move it. Cool. But I really would like to figure out how to utilize pallets because they're free mm -hmm. everywhere. Yep. They have them free yep. all over for making yep. raised beds so that it's a lot. Um, yeah, there's a lot of pallet stuff. We have a lot of pallets around here, too. Yeah, mm -hmm. sometimes we cut them up for heat. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, you can. We, we yeah. heated with our house an entire year. Well, season, winter season with just pallet wood one year. Wow. Yeah. We That's had some awesome. bring like truckloads of pallets and I did a lot of cutting it up with the um, Sawzall. Yeah. So, yeah. cause we had to cut all of them up into pieces. So that was yeah. a lot of work, but it was and basically then, heating for free. And then you don't want the nails and stuff in it as well. And that sometimes the nails would get in there, but you just, you know, when you clean out your fireplace, you just, you know. Oh, okay. So it didn't matter if the out. nails were it's in there. It's not okay. the huge of a deal. Yeah. We're going to have a wood burning stove in our new house. So that's a great idea for using. Yeah. It's hard wood. So it definitely works. It's just a lot of work to cut it yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah. So we exercise. had like piles and piles of of wood and you know if you're not heating like we're in the arctic so we need it a lot so where you are it probably doesn't get as cold as where it does up here for as well, long yeah last winter we got really cold and we got that bad snowstorm but right. you know it lasted what like a week you know it doesn't last yeah. very long yeah but i'm from illinois so i know okay. how bad yeah. it can be yeah it's really bad so we have we have a wood stove plus we have a regular oil but if you, you know, if the power goes out or something, the oil isn't going to work. So it's good to have two different ways of heating. Oh, for sure. For yeah. sure. We didn't, we had never had such a bad snowstorm and power outage like we had this past yeah, year. Yeah, this so. was, and could be worse next year. We don't really know yet. <laughs> so be prepared. Oh yeah, yeah. We are be getting prepared. A bigger generator for the new house. Um, oh, nice! And then we just had this little portable gas generator that yeah. kept us going this past yeah. year. So that was good. Yeah, and simple isn't. We have a generator, but like we have to, you have to pull it out of the basement. You have to yank the yep. chain, turn it on, and that's Plug everything really in. I can't do yeah, it. <laughs> yeah. I can't yeah. do it. My my son, fine. They were so determined. More than the heat, they wanted the the TV. So they were determined to get it going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I in that case, whatever works. Yeah. I, especially if you're, if you lost all your power and you don't have anything to do, but sit there and snuggle yeah. up watching TV is kind yeah. of a nice little, which I, which I can do if I'm not, my thing is I don't like being cold. So yeah. finding yeah. things to do is no problem. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, you but, usually have your scarves on in the winter to keep you warm. Yes, yeah. yes. And yeah, if I don't wear one, I'm I'm like, what's wrong? Why am I cold? Yeah. Yeah. So, in New Hampshire, right. how long does your winter normally last up in New Hampshire? Um, usually September can still be a little bit warm, but um, October, mid-October to about uh, April, like right now what is it may yeah so it's just now starting to get consistently warm like we might have a cooler time and then it gets warm during the day okay but probably about till the end of april so that's so are you still getting freezes at night in april no 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 okay no okay it's a little cooler but it's not freezing yeah okay. but they say up here to start planting usually memorial day 
Okay. So yeah. I'm a little bit early actually right now. Yeah. But it's, I think it's safe. When we lived in Illinois, you wanted everything planted by Memorial Day too. Yeah. Yeah. But now in Texas, they say to put your onions and your potatoes in by Valentine's Day in Ooh. February. Wow. Yes. Interesting. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. yeah. I'd like to February. grow some onions. I, onions and garlic. Have you ever grown garlic? No, I have not. And this is my first time ever growing potatoes. And they're huge. The top. Oh, of them. yeah. Yeah, I was going to put some other plants in there because I was like, oh, they're going to grow under the ground. No big yeah. deal. And my daughter, who's more experienced at gardening than I am, was like, no, mom, your potatoes, those tops are going to take over everything. You can't grow anything wow. else in there. And wow. it is full, the little raised yeah. bed. that. But you don't get potatoes. much for one plant. I think you only get like a dozen potatoes per plant. That's what I heard. Or less, probably even or less. Or less. Right? I don't know. Yeah. My... One of my neighbors here, she just brought me some potatoes that she dug up, but only a few of mine have actually blossomed. So she's like, wait till, you know, they all blossom and then you can dig them up and see what you have. Have you ever seen that movie, Faith Like Potatoes? No. That no. is a really good movie. You should watch it, especially if you're is, growing potatoes. Is it I don't on know where you would find Netflix. it. Um, you could have I'll to look. check around. I know you could probably buy the video somewhere. But it's called Faith Like Potatoes. So it's kind of has a little bit of a Christian yeah. thing to it. And But it, it, I'm thinking of in where you live and potatoes, you might be interested in that. Yeah. That I'm not going to spoil it for you. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a really good movie. It kind of has I'll you going like this. Oh, you know? okay. <laughs> I'll look it up because... Um, I have that knitting project that I okay. only have like a couple rows left. What are you, you making? I, still that dishcloth. <laughs> oh. <laughs> wow. You need to get on it. You should see these two girls that I have in my knitting class. <clears throat> yes. Every week they've got something like one wow. girl last week. Okay. The week before last, she showed me these shorts that she made. She made shorts for her little brother and the top part to it so it was and like a little romper. she knitted it and and i was trying to help her to make sleeves that oh was gosh. easy so i said you could just make straps that yeah. go over like this and then sew the straps on so that's what she did so it was like a little romper oh, the cute. next week i turn on the camera she made herself a sweater with sleeves like it wasn't perfect you know it looked like a kid made it but it was a sweater like this, oh my you know, gosh. And, and, and with sleeves and everything. I couldn't believe wow. it. Wow. And then week. she and then she stands up and she made a little skirt too to go with it in oh, one week. Oh my gosh! <laughs> and how so, do you do you still teach it all on that adult teaching platform? What was I it haven't called? I haven't done it because it's it was too confusing and I wasn't getting booked and. Okay. I actually was doing my own class like on Monday nights. Yeah. But yes. then I people kind of lost interest in it. So okay. I haven't really done it in a while. Okay. But so, I was kind of yeah, just as as requested because I do have some friends that love to knit and we were having mm -hmm. a good time with it. And like Meredith, my friend Meredith from yeah. VIP Kid World, um, she was learning how to knit as well. And mm -hmm. so it's been fun, but yeah, in one week, this girl. So I just taught them each week. I want to teach them something so that they learn something that week. Right. But knitting takes a while. So to, right. to teach something in your half hour class and then, you know, they're like the perfect students. So they, I taught them how to make an I cord, which you just make. It's like a I don't know if you've seen it. It almost makes it look like a rope. It's kind of like a circular. Okay. Yeah. Thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I have one. Is it like your headband or no? Okay, like this. No, my headband actually, this is finger knitted, but it is okay. kind of like that. Only it's, this is it. Can you see it? Yes. Yes. Oh, fun. So this is wow. what I was telling her because she didn't have buttonholes or anything. So I was telling her she could put this like as a, like, 
tie it to this part and this part and then tie it in the middle like little ties. Yes. Yeah. So I taught her how to do that. So, you know, each week I want to teach something or tell a story or do something interesting for that day and mm -hmm. also, you know, help them with whatever, whatever projects they're continuing with. Yes. But, when yeah. When I took Cindy's adult knitting class, um, you were very good about like, I mean, we were just knitting and chatting, but you had an agenda and a curriculum <laughs> that you wanted to teach us, which was really cool. I was like, yeah. wow, instead of just like, oh, let's just hop on and knit and chat. You had yeah. like an actual plan. lesson <laughs> plan that you were teaching us. And I'm like, this was well worth it. I think it was like $10. Oh, thank you. Yeah. yeah, it was fun. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, so I am doing a VIP Kid Teachers. I'm calling it a crafting uh, meetup. Okay. Okay. The last Friday of May. And um, that's like on the VIP Kid portal thing. Um, okay. And it was just knitting, but then so many people were coming. First week, people were knitting and crocheting. Last time, there was, there was, we, we got into talking about sewing machines. Oh. <laughs> so, so I, some are sewing. I named it crafters. Yeah. What what time during the day on Fridays? Um, it was 10 a.m. Yeah, 10 a.m. Okay. Your on time. Friday. Yeah, my time, Eastern. So it'll be so nine be my time. Okay. Yeah. I yeah. think I could do that. I'll have to check. So but that yeah. would be May 28th. Yeah. Okay. I think I'm yeah. good. So it was then. really fun to I'll meet up, up and see what people were making and just to chat about different things and crafts and like why they knit or how they started knitting or, mm -hmm. you know, just whatever. Yeah. Comes of it. it was really fun. You were very good about like keeping the topic flowing and the conversation flowing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good. you're so kind. Yeah. <laughs> All, All right. right. Well, I, well, I hope go. you finish your dishcloth. That the it's, only the mm -hmm. only proof of a good teacher is that their students, you know, <laughs> meet the goals. <laughs> yes. Well, I'll have to watch that movie Faith Like Potato. Faith like Potato. Potato. Okay. Yeah. I'll it's, I'm gonna write I haven't that seen it down. in a long time, but it it was very memorable. Okay. Yeah, really good. I bet it's um I'm sure it's on somewhere. It's like about very, people in another country. I can't remember what country it is, but they grew potatoes. South <laughs> Africa. It's from South Africa. Okay. Yeah. Let me see if it says where I can watch it. It Which might be one? on. Um, I don't know if it would be some of the some of the movies like that are on Netflix, or they rotate in and out. I know. Um, Definitely on DVD. So I wonder I'll look if it up. Have, yeah. They might even have, sometimes they put movies on YouTube now too. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Because we do, well, we do have. <laughs> or YouTube Amazon TV. Prime. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have YouTube. So here we don't okay. have like actual um, cable TV, but we do have like YouTube TV, Hulu and Netflix at my house. So. Okay. Yeah. And we have Amazon Prime, but I don't really know how. I think you just go through that on our TV too. Yeah. Yeah. So we have all that stuff. We just don't have real TV. <laughs> right. Yeah. We don't watch anything. Yeah, we don't, I don't watch anything on TV any either. Yeah. I don't even know how to turn on my TV, to be honest with you. <laughs> I good. use my computer or I, I realize my new computer, I press airplay and it goes right on the TV. But oh, to turn on the regular yeah. TV, it's too many steps. And I don't yeah. I don't bother with it. Yeah, I that's don't nice. bother with it. And then I ha and then I can't find anything because there's a thousand things to choose from, and it's like too much. Yeah. So I don't even watch it. <laughs> so I watch All YouTube. All right. Well, our general <laughs> contractor I think wants to talk to me, so I better Oh, run. <laughs> okay. Great. All right. All right talk have a great to you later. Day. Thank you so much. Goodbye. You're welcome. Bye.